honorable members in the basant season of renewal and resurgence i welcome you all to this joint session of both houses of parliament this is a historic session heralding the advancement of the budget cycle and merger of the railway budget with the general budget for the first time in independent india we gather once again to celebrate democracy cherished value and culture that has prospered throughout the long history of our nation indeed a culture that guides my government towards sabko saath sabko vikas <coughs> honorable members the idea of sahana bhavantu sahana bhunaktu may we be protected together and blessed together with bliss has inspired our civilization from time immemorial this year marks the 350th birth anniversary of the great sikh guru guru gobind singh ji we are also observing the 1000th birth anniversary of the great saint philosopher ramanu charya the luminous path of social transformation and reform shown by them serves as a beacon to us all and is an inspiration of my government This year marks the centenary year of Champaran Satyagraha, which gave a new direction to our freedom struggle and channelized Jana Shakti in the fight against colonial powers. <coughs> Mahatma Gandhi's <coughs> ideas to Satyagraha instilled. in every indian and indomitable self belief and spirit of sacrifices for the larger goals the jan shakti the jan shakti is today our greatest strength honorable members the resilience and forbearance demonstrated by our countrymen particularly the poor recently in the fight against black money and corruption is remarkable the same spirit has driven the lpg give it up campaign over 1.2 crore consumers have voluntarily given up their lpg subsidy which has helped the underprivileged in accessing lpg connections this jan shakti has transformed such bharat mission into a jano andolan 1.4 lakh villages over 450 cities 77 districts and three states have declared themselves open defecation free my government salutes the strength of jan shakti and pledges to constructively utilize it in rashtra nirman at the core of all my government's policies is the welfare of the garib dalit pirit shoshit banchit kishan shramik and yuva 
my government is guided by the antodai philosophy of pandit dindayal upadhyay his centenary year is being observed as garib kalyan birth financial inclusion is key to poverty alleviation an unprecedented 26 crore plus jandhan accounts have been opened for the unbanked over 20 crore rupee debit cards have been issued to enable cashless payments moving swiftly to jandhan to jan suraksha close to 13 crore poor have been covered under various social security schemes honorable members to take banking system to the doorstep of the poor and the unbanked the indian postal payment bank has been started the postal network with wider reach and deep penetration over 1.5 lakh crore offices will also function as postal banks besides over 1 lakh bank mitras appointed by the banks over 2.5 lakh gram dak sevaks will also function as <coughs> banking correspondents over rupees 2 2 lakh crores has been provided through 5.6 crore loans sanctioned under pradhan mantri mudra yojana to ensure collateral bank financing for the unfunded and to promote small business 70% of these has been availed of by women entrepreneurs under the dindayal upadhyay antodaya yojana which aims to empower women particularly from the deprived sections over rupees 16000 crores have been made available to self help groups in the current financial year this scheme aims to reach out to nearly 5 crore women <coughs> soon my government has taken many initiatives to improve the quality of life of the poor through assured housing affordable health care safe drinking water and sanitation and access to clean energy honorable members my government is committed to provide shelter to every houseless poor household through the pradhan mantri awas yojana with appropriate interest subvention on housing credit poor sanitation further weakens the economic wherewithal of poor household such bharat abhiyan aims to ensure health and sanitation particularly for the poor under this mission more than 3 crore toilets have been constructed the pradhan mantri ujjwala yojana will make clean energy accessible to the poor this scheme aims to safeguard the health of women and children by providing them with a clean cooking fuel lpg liberating them from the ill effects of smoky kitchens and long hours of collecting firewood free gas connections are being provided to 5 crore households already 1.5 crore connections have been provided in the current financial year it is noteworthy that 
of Ujjala beneficiaries belong to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Honorable members, under Dindal Upadhyay, Gram Jyoti Yojana, out of over 18,000 villages which have been in darkness since independence, over 11,000 have been electrified in a record time. Under Ujjala programs, over 20 crore LED bulbs have been distributed, resulting in savings more than rupees 10,000 crore in the electricity bills of consumers, majority of whom are poor. Several steps have been taken to make health care affordable and accessible to every citizen of our country, particularly the poor. Mission Indra Dhanush commits to vaccinate every child everywhere against the preventable disease. It has so far benefited 55 lakh children. Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Oshodhi Yojana has been launched to ensure that the poor have access to quality medicines at affordable prices. Special facilities created to control the endemic Japanese encephalitis have yielded encouraging results in significantly reducing mortality due to this disease. Honorable members, in <clears throat> Kishan's welfare lies the nation's prospect, prosperity. A favorable monsoon after consecutive years of drought, supplemented by farmer-oriented schemes, has increased the acreage and yield of most Kharif crops. The shown area in the current Ruby season has shown 6% increase in connection in comparison to last year. My government has taken various steps to transform the lives of our farmers. Focus has been on holistic development of agriculture sector, making available affordable credit, ensuring assured supply of seeds and fertilizers, improving irrigation facilities, comprehensive risk coverage, improving productivity through soil health cards, assured market and remunerative prices for the products through ENAM. Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana expanded the ambit of risk coverage, doubled the sum insured and facilitated the lowest ever premium for the farmers. During the Kharif 2016, around 3.66 crore farmers were insured for a sum of rupees 1.4 lakh crores. Honorable members, with the objective of digitization of all the live Kishan credit cards, another three crore cards will be converted into rupee debt cards shown. The corpus of Nawad fund has been doubled to rupees 41,000 crore to ensure easy credit access to insurers and to farmers. With focus on part drop, more crop, and hor kheth kopani coverage under Pradhan Mantri, Krishi Shinchai Yojana has been expanded more than 12.7 lakh hectares have been brought under micro-irrigation in the last two years. 
Honorable members may recall that soaring prices of pulses was a matter of grave concern around this time last year. My government has taken proactive steps and prices of pulses are now under control to ensure fair price for farmers and to protect consumers. A buffer stock of 20 lakh tons of pulses has been envisaged against which 8 lakh tons of pulses have already been procured. Honorable members, my government is making Nari Shakti an integral part of our development journey. Our women deserve equal opportunity. The Rio Olympics, where we took great pride in the performance of P.V. Sindhu, Shakshi Malik, Deepa Karnkar, and others, illustrates the strength of our women. Women are being inducted in combat streams of our armed forces. The nation is proud of its first three women fighter pilots. This reminds us of what we can achieve as a nation if women are fully empowered and if their skills and talent are optimally utilized. The Beti Machao Beti Porao scheme that addresses the issue of declining child sex ratio is yielding encouraging results. Under the Shukanna Samridhi Yojana, launched with an objective of ensuring to secure future to all our girl child, over one crore accounts have been opened and an amount of over rupees 11,000 crores has been deposited. The Pradhan Mantri Shurakshit Matritta Bhijan will provide comprehensive antenatal care by a qualified medical practitioner to all pregnant women. The Revision of Maternity Benefit Act and Enhancement of Maternity Leave from 12 weeks to 26 weeks will support pregnant women at their workplace. Honorable members, 65% of our population today is below the age of 35. Our youth is our greatest strength and Yuba needs to be channelized effectively with the motto of her heart, Kohunar, my government has taken several steps for skilling the youth and improving their employability. The work of skill development that was earlier spread across 21 ministries and 50 departments has been brought under one umbrella ministry. The Pradhan Mantri Koushal Vikas Yojana has been launched with a budget outlay of rupees 12,000 crore to train one crore youth over the next four years. Over 20 lakh youth have already benefited. National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme has been launched with a budget outlay of rupees 10,000 crores. 978 employment exchange spread across the country have been integrated as part of the national career service portals. Honorable members, my government has opened new avenues and made higher technical education more accessible to students 
from economically weaker sections for the first time. IIT trainees have been provided with academic equivalents at matriculation and higher secondary level through bridge course to enable them to pursue higher education. With the objective of providing training of international standards to youth, a nationwide network of 50 India international skill centers is being established. The Pradhan Mantri Yuv Jojana has been launched for promoting entrepreneurship, education, and training amongst 7 lakh students. My government has announced a package of rupees 6,000 crores to boost employment generation and exports in the apparel and made up sectors. The package is expected to generate over 1.1 crore jobs, mostly for women. Honorable members, Swami Ojayati, as part of the foremost guiding principles of my government, and several measures have been taken to the welfare of the Swamis. For the first time ever, minimum wages have been increased by 42 percent in both agricultural and non-agricultural sector. Bonus coverage, the calculation ceiling limit has been doubled to rupees 7,000 and the eligibility <coughs> limit increased from rupees 10,000 to rupees 21,000. This will directly benefit an additional 55 black workers. The universal account number has ensured portability of employees' provident fund accounts and has safeguarded the interest of crores of workers. Workers employed in the informal sector will benefit the most from my government's decision to enable employers to pay wages to their employees through banks. This will increase compliance of payment of minimum wages. It will ensure that workers in the unorganized sector also enjoy health benefits under employees' state insurance <coughs> corporation and social security through provident fund. Implementation of the seventh pay commission has benefited 50 lakh employees and 35 black pensioners. To protect senior citizens from the impact of interest rate fluctuations, interest rate for senior citizens has been fixed at 8% payable <coughs> monthly for a period of 10 years. Honorable members, social and economic equality for the deprived and disempowered sections is the first promise of our Constitution. My government is committed to fulfill this promise. Through the Stand Up India initiative, my government plans to empower over two and a half lakh scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, and women entrepreneurs for promoting entrepreneurship, the national scheduled caste, scheduled tribes hub has been launched with an initial allocation of rupees 490 crores. Under the Forest Rights Act, about 16.5 lakh individual forest rights titles have been granted over an area of 55.4 lakh acres of total land. Further, community forest titles have been distributed over an area of about 47 lakh 
acres of forest lands. The location of our mineral wealth largely coincides with the tribal habitations in our country. The Pradhan Mantri Khonij Shetra Kalyan Yojana will serve the dual purpose of ensuring sustainable mining activity as well as local area development for the betterment of the tribals and the poor inhabitants in the mining area. District Mineral Foundation is a novel initiative in this regard. Honorable members, my government has increased the allocation under the tribal sub plan. Fourteen different sectors have been identified under the Banbandha Kollan Yojana for the employment of tribals. Hundred out of three hundred districts envisaged under the Samaprasad Mukherjee Rarban mission will be developed in tribal areas. The success of Indian cricket team at the World Cup for the Blind 2014 and the Indian Paralympics <coughs> contingent at Rio 2016 demonstrate that the Bangajan can scale great heights if afforded an opportunity. My government is committed providing the Dibbangjan equal opportunities for development besides increasing the percentage of reservations for Dibbangjan from 3 to 4 percent in the government jobs. My government has accelerated filling up of backlog vacancies. Over six lakhs Dibbangajan have so far benefited from 47,000 special <coughs> assistance camps organized across the country since May 2014. Honorable members, the Shugamma Bharat Abhijan is improving accessibility of the Dibbangajan at public places. For the first time, speech and language disability and specific learning disability have been included in the rights of persons with Disabilities Act 2016. A common sign language is being developed for the entire country. The Nirama Swast Bhima Yojana provided the Bangjan effectively <coughs> affected by autism, cerebral palsy, mental retardation, and those with multiple disabilities a health insurance cover of up to one lakh rupees. Like the strings of Sita which produces different notes, but come together to create a beautiful melody. People professing of different faiths and religion constitute the spirit of India and contribute to the strength of the nation. The courage and sacrifice of Baba Bande Singh Bahadur whose 300 martyrdom anniversary we observe this year and the spirit of selfless service of Mother Teresa who was canonized recently inspire us in equal measures. My government has taken several measures to ensure that the aspirations of the people from all communities are fulfilled and a more focused approach 
has been taken towards inclusive development of the notified minority community, namely Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, Sikhs, Parsis and Jains. While scholarship and fellowship schemes have encouraged their educational employment, skill development schemes like Shekho or Kamau, Ustad and Naimanjil have enabled their economic empowerment. Honorable members, just as all the drops of rainwater and streams converging in an one ocean, all the policies of my government converge for the welfare of the poor, deprived and the underprivileged. From giving house to the shelteredless, to electrifying unelectrified village, from giving free LPG connection, to supplying LED bulbs to the poor, from Jan Dhan to Jan Shuraksha, from making available affordable health care to providing quality education to the poor, central to all the policies of my government is the welfare of the poor. Balanced and equitable developments of all regions vital to India's progress. Under its proactive, activist policy, my government is focusing on reducing the isolation of the eastern region and northeast by improving connectivity through road, rail, telecom, power and waterways. Honorable members, my government has started Pradhan Mantri Urja Ganga with the extraction, with the execution of 2,500 kilometers long Jagdishpur, Haldia, Bokaro, Dhamra National Gas Pipeline Project with an investment of around rupees 12,000 crore, <coughs> 12,500 crores. This project will care to energy requirements of five states covering 40 districts, 2,600 villages. The project will also lead to the revival of three large fertilizer plants, industrialization of more than 20 cities, and the city gas network development in seven cities. My government sees the northeastern states as the Ostalakshmi, that they can take India to new heights. The Northeast is the gateway to Southeast Asia. We are opening up road and rail route to our neighbor, neighboring countries to boost the economic development of the region. To ensure unhindered support and development of Northeastern states, my government is continuing with the special dispensation that the assistance pattern of the northeastern states and is providing assistance in the ratio of 90-10 for core central schemes and 80-20 to non-core central schemes of these states. Honorable members, by the end of the year, all meter gauge tracks in the northeastern states will be converted into broad gates. The railways have undertaken 
a major expansion in the region at a cost of around rupees 10,000 crores. Urunachal Pradesh and Meghalaya have been put on the rail map. Agartala in Tripura has been connected with broad gauge line. The Brahmaputra Kaka and Polymer Limited at Numaligar, Refinery Limited, Wax Unit are big projects that will create huge employment opportunities in the Northeast region. The government has approved the Northeast BPO promotion schemes in the Digital India program for creation of employment opportunities. The beauty and diversity of the Northeast states is a natural hub for tourism. The Ministry of Tourism has identified the thematic circuit for the Northeast region. My government has provided <coughs> special financial assistance <coughs> to mitigate the damages caused by the <coughs> unprecedented floods in the hilly and other areas of the country. Honorable members, from highways to highways, from railways to waterways, from seaports to airports, from water pipelines to gas pipelines, from earth sciences to satellites, from rural infrastructure to smart cities, creation of vital next generation infrastructure has received special attention of my government. <coughs> For modernization of railways, the highest ever capital outlay of rupees 1.21 lakh crore has been provided. My government aims to connect all rural habitations with all weather roads. 73,000 kilometers of road has been built so far in the rural area. More than 5,000 kilometers of roads in 44 left-wing extremist affected districts are being upgraded. The national civil aviation policy will give a major boost to air connectivity in the small towns and cities. Under the Bharat Net project, optical fiber cables now cover over 75,000 gram panchayats, up from only 59 in May 2014. India has launched eight operational missions covering meteorological, navigation, and earth observation and communication satellites. ISRO completed the seventh satellite constellation of India, regional navigational satellite services, NAVI. SRO added another feather to its cap this year by successfully launching 20 satellites in a highest ever single launch. Honorable members, my government is committed to optimally harness our marine wealth and give a new impetus to ocean-led development under the Shagar Mala programs on port-led development, a total of 199 projects with an outlay of over rupees 3 lakh crores have been identified for implementation in the next three years. Of these projects, of more than rupees 1 lakh crore are already under implementation. <coughs> 